Funny thing about learning trig identities is sometimes you freak out over things you really shouldn't. Like you've done harder things than this, but this one gives you a, a problem for some reason. Like students will understand sine A plus B equals sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, right? A lot of letters in there. And they'll understand how to convert numbers. Like if I said, what's the sine of 75 degrees? They would say, okay, sine of 75 degrees equals sine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. And from there, we go back into these equations for A and B as the angles. Well, this time, I have one variable, which in this case is omega, and one angle, which is 240. So sometimes people look at that and like, they kind of freak out. Like, what do I do when one's an angle and one's a not angle? It's a variable. Well, you don't really do anything. You just plug it into that formula. So it would be, um, remember, signs can't change signs. So that's going to be sine of omega times cosine of 240 degrees. And since signs can't change signs, it stays a positive. Uh, signs can't change. So change means cosine, cosine omega, and sine of 240. Now, if you remember where 240 is on your unit circle, right, you're going down into the left, mostly down, a little bit to the left. That's this right here. So when I go mostly down, that means radical 3 over 2 down, and a little to the left, that means 1 over 2 to the left. Okay, so let's take those ideas, put them here. This is going to be sine of omega times, well, this was a little to the left. This is the x value. And plus cosine of omega. Well, sine of 240, that was mostly down. That was negative radical 3 over 2. So that's not very pretty the way I would simplify this. I mean, there's not much you can do, but I would just move those coefficients into the front. Negative 1 half times sine of omega minus radical 3 over 2 times cosine omega. And that really is where you stop. Okay, it shouldn't surprise you that there are variables left in this thing since I started with variables. Okay, so that's that's how this goes. And there's actually a cool application where we learn the co-function identities by a similar method, but we'll get to that in another.